how to make a DIY worm bin for less than $20 with a worm tea compartment. We're going to show you how to make a worm bin for less than $20. And this worm bin will be made based on our experience with our five bucket worm bin that we made a few years ago. And we've been so happy with it that the only problem we have is that it's not big enough. So today we're scaling up to a 20 gallon worm bin, which is about 75 liters. And we are so excited because worm compost, worm compost has been extremely helpful in our garden. Our plants are loving it and it's a great way to add fertilizers naturally to your garden. Before we continue, please consider taking a moment to hit that like button and hit subscribe. That way you'll support us and you'll help us grow so that we can keep spreading the word about how to grow your own food without chemicals. Making your own DIY worm bin with a separate worm tea compartment is very easy. Just follow these steps and these are the tools you need. You need the two bins with lids, solid color. And you get a tool, a simple drill with a wood bit about three quarter inch because you want the half inch to go into it smoothly and a washer just for you don't want the water or the juice from the room to leak out and a simple female faucet you see the treading inside there that I can screw inside and for it to be lock off and on and some silicone to make sure no none of our juice is released one last thing you need is the 116 drill bit that's very important because that you're going to use to make the holes for airflow inside the worm bin. Before you make your hole in the bin, you can always try to see if you can find some sort of thin plastic that's similar to the bin to test out your drill bit because you only get one chance to make that hole. When you decide where to put your little on off wolf or spigot, make sure that you put it at the lowest point because remember we don't have more than about this much space at the bottom of this where you can actually have the worm tea. So you want to go inside the bin and measure to see where you're going to put it from the outside. You want to put it as low as you can. Make sure it's kind of leaning at the bottom. Do you want to drill from the inside so you know you have enough space for the connector to be level with the bottom of the container. There's the hole. Let's find a male connector, the male coupling. And we put a wash on. Now He's screwing it in, which is why you want to make sure the hole is smaller than the actual thread. You can see it's coming out right here. And the washer on the inside is going to help make it waterproof so the worm tea does not come out when you don't want it to. So before we screw on the valve or the spigot, we're going to put the waterproof silicone on all around the thread. 
as close to the pin as possible to seal it. Now I'm going to screw on the little spigot thingy. I think the correct term is a ball wolf. That is how easy it is to put the spigot on. Now you can easily put it on and off and get your warm tea when you need it. This is how we get warm tea from the bottom of our old worm bin. And now we'll get it from the new worm bin too. Now one very important thing is that you got to get the right drill bit. This is... <laughs> Go ahead, tell me. 116 wood drill bit. And this is how we check this right one. Because this worm bit that we made years ago, very few tiny, tiny worms escaped out of here over the years. And that's what you want. You want air to go in, but you do not want the worms to escape. The concept of this worm bin is extremely simple. All you need to do is put one inside the other. Look how easy that works. And then we're gonna make holes in this little space around the bin. That's where the air holes are gonna be. We also gonna make holes in one of the lids. And then the other lid, we're gonna save and we're gonna keep it close by the bin because if you know there's going to be a big storm coming or you're going to get rain for days and days and days then you do not want too much water to come into the worm bin because you only have this amount of room for the worm juice and then if it becomes too much it will start to go inside the worm bin so you don't want that so you just need to make these holes It up just to give myself some more space. I just want to make sure that my holes to get good airflow inside the worm bin so they can get oxygen. You want to make sure to keep your worms happy so that they will multiply. And once they multiply, you can make another worm bin. For the side, you can see inside where the holes are. So now we want to make sure there's enough ventilation in here. So we are also going to do one of the lids. Now we're going to do the lid. Make sure to secure the lid to the bin first. That way it doesn't move. Before you put the two bins together, you need to make the drainage holes inside the bottom of the top tote bin. So to do that, you want to make sure that you remove the top bin for the bottom bin and put it either on top of a milk crate or a bucket or you can just leave it on the ground. Just do not leave it inside the other bin because if you leave them together, there's a great risk that you will drill a hole to the top bin down to the bottom bin and all of a sudden you'll have a leaking worm tea compartment. These drainage holes will serve as drainage for the worm bin itself but also as the rainwater seeps through the worm compost the water will drain into 
the bottom compartment becoming worm T. And that is the tea you will then be able to take from the spigot and use in your garden. That's it. That is how you make the holes. Now we're just going to empty out this plastic and put the bins into each other. So now make sure you don't get all these little plastic pieces inside the worm bin because you do not want your worms to be eaten. Plastic that will be the purpose of what we're doing. So then just dump it into a trash can and make sure there's nothing inside your bins. Both bins, both the inside and the outside one because you don't want any worm to eat either. There we have it. One DIY worm bin created in less than half an hour. Lots of air holes for oxygen and for rainwater to come down to keep the area moist and give us worm tea to use in the garden. We ended up spending less than $20 on this worm bin. It cost us $18.90 with a little discount from Lowe's, but even without the discount, you would still pay less than $20 to make this. The bins were on sale at Target, but even if they're not on sale, you still get a very good deal. We are filling up the worm bin with leaves. We have a lot of leaves. January in Florida. It's like fall in Florida. Lots of leaves coming down from above. That's why we named ourselves the Dancing Treetops Family Farm because we have trees everywhere. We're always looking up those treetops. I have some shelf in there, some green vegetation. You can use paper, shred the paper to make sure you don't use the plastic windows. Get rid of those plastic windows before you sh shred your junk envelopes. And you can use toilet paper rolls, cardboard, keep the tape out of there. Just fill it up. So we've just put some green, some leaves. It's about one third full. Banana peels. We use most of this for the chickens, but today it's going to the worm bin. And then we've got out some worm compost, some worm compost from our other bin. If you don't have that, don't worry about it. If you have compost, great, put some in there. But let's see if we can find some worms, some red wigglers, they like the dark, that's why they're hiding. See one? I've just grabbed a bunch from over there and every time I'm going to be taking compost from the other bin, worm compost, I will transfer more worms over, make it easy for myself. But these are now going to get a new home. So I'm going to sprinkle it over. Okay, we're gonna close the lid and place this worm bin in the shade somewhere. And this one is gonna go in the food forest. We have found a spot for our new worm bin beneath a pine tree. We'll get some rain, but not full blast. And it's in the shade with easy access to the rest of the garden. Let's talk about what kind of worms to use. You can dig up your own worms, but make sure they're not invasive kind of jumping worms that can harm your plants instead of helping them. You can generally find the red worms on the logs and near compost, but the problem is they can be very difficult to identify the right kind. You may also be able to find red wigglers at Walmart or in your fish and bait shop, but again, make sure these are the right worms for composting. Or you can order red wigglers online, which is what we did. Three years ago, we ordered 250 red wigglers online and they have worked great for us. They have worked so hard and now that they've multiplied, no, I did not count them, but they have multiplied. We have a lot of them and now we split them so that a lot of them got into this new bin and we'll just keep them adding more as we dig up the compost. The best type of worms for worm composting are red wigglers, Icenia fetida and red worms, Lumbricus rubellus, because these worms 
prefer a compost environment to the regular plain soil and they produce better and richer worm casting than the regular worms plus they just eat a lot more which is great when you want to turn your compost into rich worm castings. When we made our first five gallon bucket worm bin three years ago we ordered these red wigglers on Amazon and it was an investment for us. We just got those 250 worms but it was an investment into our future, into our dream and we have been so happy with it. So now that we're transferring some of these to the new bin, we hope they will multiply again and then within the year we can start another bin. Because in our opinion you can never have too many worm bins. I'll put a link up to the worms that we purchased in our DIY worm bin piece at dancingtreetops.com if you're interested in getting the red wigglers that we have in our bins. The only issue we have with this worm bin and all other worm bins is that they're made out of plastic. We would love nothing more than to one day own one or more worm bins made out of biodegradable compostable plastic that is safe for everyone. We're not purists in the sense that we do the best we can with what we have available to us. We avoid using plastic whenever we can and hope for safer alternatives in the future. If you guys know of a safer alternative or if you know of a company producing products for gardening and farming out of safer materials, please leave a comment or reach out to us. The five gallon buckets that we use are made out of food grade plastic, but as we all know, all plastics leach microplastics over time. We have faith in the scientists and environmentalists and we look forward to supporting the new, safer, environmentally friendly alternatives to all the plastics that we know and use. But we worry about the chemicals used in plastics and we try to educate ourselves as much as possible and we encourage all of you to do the same. The reality is that gardeners and farmers are surrounded by plastic and whenever we can find alternatives, we all for it. We don't use weed barriers and we wish we didn't need to grow a lot of our fruit trees in plastic containers. But until we reach our dream of finding more acreage, we have to grow most of our plants and fruit trees in nursery pots. That's why we appreciate all of you watching because the Dancy Cheetos Family Farm YouTube channel is part of making our dream a reality. So thank you to every single one of you out there who's watching our videos, saving and sharing them. If you are a subscriber, thank you from all of us. Thank you for being a part of our dream. Thank you for being a part of our journey. The future is scary, but it is also exciting. We have so many ideas that we cannot wait to bring to all of you about growing your own food, farming for the future, healing ourselves and the earth, educating about environmentally friendly growing methods and providing our local community with chemical free food while continuing to use regenerative farming practices that provide solutions instead of causing more problems for our mother earth, for our children, for our future grandchildren and for the generations coming after us. That's our twenty dollar worm bin. We are excited about this one. We hope you are too. Make sure to save this video so that you can come back and see what we used and make your own. If you enjoyed this video, please support the Dancy Treetops Family Farm by hitting that like button, hitting subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching and thank you for making the world a little greener.